Hello devs and welcome to this channel. Today, I will introduce you to Axum, a web framework for building backend services in Rust. If I had to ask what makes a great web server, should it prioritize speed or should it be able to handle thousands of requests at the same time and never crash under heavy load? Well, a good web server does all of the above and should be reliable enough to always be up and running. It shouldn't crash unexpectedly due to memory issues, bad error handling, or struggle under heavy traffic. And that is where Rust shines. Since Rust is a multi-threaded low-level language known for its speed and memory safety, it is arguably the best choice for back-end development. When starting back-end development in a new language, one of the first decisions you will face is choosing the right framework. In Rust, the two names that dominate the space is Axum and Arctic Web. However, Axum is the preferred choice since it uses Tokyo for its async runtime and Tower for its middleware services. So what exactly is Tokyo and Tower and why do they matter so much here? Well, if you are not already familiar with them, Tokyo is the most popular and powerful asynchronous runtime in Rust and it is what powers Axum's ability to handle a large number of concurrent connections effectively. On the other hand, Tower provides the middleware layer for Axum giving it built-in features like logging, authentication, rate limiting and more out of the box. The combination of the Tokyo runtime and built-in middleware makes Axum a powerful and most loved choice among Rust developers. Inspecting their numbers side by side on crates.io, you can see that Axum has about 97 million downloads in total and 90 million as of recent, while Actis Web has 31 million in total and 4 million recent downloads. Now, how does Axum perform in real world scenarios? Let's take a look at the Tech Empowers benchmark. The Fortunes section here is a benchmark on how many times per second it can retrieve some items from a database and then create and serve a HTML file using those items. Out of hundreds of frameworks available from several languages, Axum with PostgreSQL is ranked at number 6 with about 440,000 fortune responses per second. So how do you set up a backend server in Rust using Axum? It is pretty easy and straightforward. You just need to have Rust and Cargo installed in your system, which you can do by heading to rustup.rs and following the steps based on your operating system. After this, you can create a new Rust project by running Cargo New, followed by the name of your application. I will name mine Axum Project. This will create a directory with the name of your project. We can navigate into that directory. And here, we will have to add two Rust crates to the project, Tokyo and Axum. I will do this by running cargo add Axum, then Tokyo. We will need most features from Tokyo. Therefore, I will follow this with a features flag, then Tokyo slash full. When the installation is done, you can open the project in your editor. In the main.rs file of the project, I will go ahead and create a simple Axum application that returns hello world in the root route. And after this, I will explain what every line in this file does. In the first line, you can see we imported two items from Axum, a get function and a router struct. The get function is used to handle get requests, but Axum also provides other functions like posts, puts, delete and more for different request types. The router struct is what we use to set up routes for our REST API. 
The main function in Rust is the entry point of a binary, and this cannot be asynchronous. But how is it possible for ours to be asynchronous? And what does the attribute macro in line 3 do? I will comment line 3 and when I save, you can see an error saying that the main function cannot be async. But the error is gone after I uncomment this line. If we check the Tokyo documentation in docs.rs, you can see that when we add the main attribute macro to an async function, it converts it to a normal function that creates a Tokyo runtime and then runs the content of the function in an async block using the Tokyo runtime. How does Axum or any web framework know when a request is coming in? It all starts with binding the server to a specific address. In our main function, we define this as the address string, which means our server will run locally on port 3000. Axum relies on Tokyo's TCP listener to listing for incoming connections. By passing our address to TCP listener, Axum can continuously watch for requests on port 3000. If the listener is set up successfully, we print a confirmation message to the terminal, letting us know that the server is running. Lastly, using the serve function from Axum, I will pass in the TCP listener and a router, which is returned from the router function below. The router function returns an instance of the router struct we imported at line 1. Using the router struct, we can define API routes and their corresponding handlers. Like here, I added a root route, and when the server receives a GET request on this route, the hello world function is called, and its return value is sent back as a response. Now, this is just for a GET request. What if we wanted to include a POST request for the same route? Well, to do this, one method is to import the POST function from the routing module, and in the router instance, I will add a new route for the same path. But this time, instead of GET, I will use the POST function. This works, but it is a little bit too much since we have already added a route for the root up here. Each method routing function like get, post, or delete returns a method router struct. With this struct, I can just chain a post request handler to it by calling the post method and passing in the handler for the post request. I will create a handler for the post request, and this will return a string, just as the hello world function above. But how can we send more than just a plain string in our response? What if we need to include an HTTP status code? What if we wish to return a JSON instead of a plain string? In the post request handler, Instead of returning just a string, I will specify that the return type of the function can be any item that implements the into response trait, which I will import from the response module in Axum. I will explain why I did that soon, but right now, you can notice that we have no errors since a string slice implements the into response trait. Like I said before, what if we need to include an HTTP status code? A way to do this is by using a tuple. But first, let's import the status code enum from Axum's HTTP module. In the post request handler, I will return a tuple. The first element of this tuple will be the status code created, while the second element will be a string saying post created. This works because a tuple whose first element is the status code and second element is a response body implements the into response trait. 
Also note that a handler in Axum should always be async. Now to run the server and test our current application, in the terminal within my project directory, I will make use of cargo run. Now this will run the application at its current state. When I make a change, a request to port 3000 will return the old version of our application. To recompile the server anytime a change is made, I will make use of a tool called Cargo Watch. And you can install this by running Cargo Install Cargo Watch in your terminal. I already have this installed, so I will run the command Cargo Watch X run. You can test your application using Postman or Crawl through the terminal, but in my case, I prefer to use Insomnia. I will send a GET request to our local host at port 3000. And when I run this, you can see that Hello from Axum is returned as a response. If I switch to a POST request, I get POST created as a response. You can notice it also returned a 201 status code which says created. Now we can add status code to a response. But what if we wanted to return a JSON as the response? How can we make that possible? Axum comes with a JSON struct which we can use to send a struct in Rust as a JSON response. But the catch is that we need an additional crate called sede, which provides us with the deserialize and serialize traits. For example, I can create a struct called user below with a name field. If I wish to return a JSON of this format to the response, with the help of the JSON struct from Axum, I can wrap an instance of the user struct with the JSON struct. Right now, I get an error saying that our return value does not implement the into response trait. This is because the user struct does not implement the serialized trait from sede. I can easily fix this by adding the sede trait to our project. But it is best I leave this for the next video where we will dive deeper on requests and responses in Axum. Rather, I will do this manually by returning a JSON string and adding a content type header to our response. This is not the best way, but I just want to show you how to add headers to a response using a tuple. I will replace our previous request body with a raw string literal that contains a JSON with a name field and value as Joe. A raw string literal in Rust allows us to include special characters like double quotes in strings. It begins by adding an R, a hashtag and a double quote at the beginning while ending with a double quote and a hashtag. Now, to include a header in this tuple, it should come after the status code but before the response body. Since we can have multiple response headers, we add this in an array. An HTTP header comes in the form of key value pairs. So using a tuple, I will set the key as content type and value as application slash JSON. I will save this and when I send a POST request to our server, a JSON with a name field is returned. But is this the only way we can return responses? Well, if this format of returning responses does not sit well with you, you can build a response using the response struct from Axum. The response struct can be imported from the response module just like the into response trait. The equivalent of this using the response struct is this. After calling the builder method on the response struct, you can add a status code using the status method. To add a header, 
you can use the header method and pass in the key and value pair. You can add as many headers as you wish by calling the header method again and then pass in the key and value. Lastly, for the body, I passed in the raw string literal. When using the response builder method, you can specify the return type of your handler to be a response struct. There is still a lot more to Axum like properly returning a JSON and many more. There is still a lot of questions left to be answered such as how do we extract query parameters from a request path? How about JSON from a response body? How do we add middlewares to our application? These questions are answered in the next video where we will dive deeper into HTTP requests and responses in Axum. See you later and thanks for watching.